everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Schneider. I'm the TV editor at Variety, and thank you so much for joining us. We're talking season three of Mythic Quest. There we are. I believe you are the first people to actually see that first episode. So rub it in, tell your friends you saw it first. So thank you so much for coming by. And now we have a great panel for you to talk a little bit about where the show is going this season. Yeah. So let me introduce you to our panelists right now. First up. He's the co-creator, executive producer, writer, director, and of course he plays Ian Grimm on the show, Rob McElhaney. Yeah! Let's go, Rex Woo! Next up, uh, also executive producer, writer, director, and of course, David Brittlesby. Yeah! He also directed this season. There's a theme we're going to talk about in a bit here. But of course, he plays Brad on the show as well. Danny, Pooty. She is the one and only Poppy Lee on the show. Charlotte McDowell. She's also a writer and a director, and of course she plays Rachel as well on the show, Ashley Birch! She plays Dana on the show, Imani Hakim! And finally, we put her at the end because she scares me the most. She plays Joe on the show, Jesse Ennis! Yeah. <laughs> So welcome, welcome. Finally getting season three out of you guys. So um, why don't we pick up with where things left off on season two? Because the show ended where, of course, I and Poppy leave Mythic Quest. And you guys painted yourself in a corner a little bit of, okay, what do we do next? We're now separating this gang. So take me back to when you first sat down and started talking about, okay, what's next for this show? Yeah, that was a, a conscious decision at the end of two. Um, to blow it up, and it's always a, a terrifying prospect, but that's kind of the approach that we always have have had to this show, and kind of any show that we that we work on, that you want to put yourself into uncomfortable spots, because that's when some of the, the best creativity can, can spring. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you, know, you planted those seeds throughout season two, where Poppy had come up with this Hera idea, this, this add-on to the game, and it turns out it wasn't going to work, so Let's just leave and build our whole entire new company. And this allows a real interesting sort of new twist on the dynamic between your two characters. Uh, but kind of take us into where things stand now as we head into season three. They've started their new company, uh, Grim Pop. And, and from there now, what is the new sort of relationship between the two as partners? And, and what should we expect as the season progresses? The two of you. Charlotte, do you want to jump in? Oh, I'm going to take this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing that I kind of like about Poppy's trajectory so far is the shifting of the goalposts at the beginning of each season, where she's like, oh, well, if I only had more control over Mythic Quest, I'd be happy. Or, oh, well, if we were working on something that was my thing, I'd be happy. And so I feel like from my perspective in the character, it's like, landing in a new space that is supposed to be her dream that quickly becomes a nightmare. And I don't know about Ian's perspective because I honestly try not to think about it, <laughs> but I do feel like it's, we, we pick up in this space where they're supposed to be, this is supposed to be the ideal scenario, but the audience is usually smarter than the characters and uh, it's clearly <laughs> not. <laughs> right, Poppy continues to go on a journey and, and she has a lot of self-doubt as you know, she, she's a genius programmer, but at the same time, she, she's still sort of struggling with this sort of issue of, of self-worth and, and insecurity. Uh, and, and you know, what is that like now as she's striking out and, and it really is all on her game. This is her idea. And, and what does that mean for Poppy as she's sort of struggling to uh, you know, find herself? Yeah, I mean, I think for Poppy and I and both, they're trying to prove that they can step into a different role. And that's challenging because, ever, for instance, with Poppy, I feel like her entire experience has been one of the supporter and thinking, well, if I was in charge, I would do this, or if I was in charge, I would do that. And 
when you finally do give that person that power, they realize that maybe they don't have any of the skills required to actually execute it. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of like that. It's like if you've been kept in a box this big your whole life, and then you get let out of the box, it's like, well, I don't really know how to stretch. That was lovely. <laughs> 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 we're, getting, we're getting deep here. And, and, and Rob, from, from the perspective of Ian, I, you know, we see at the end of season two, at, at first he's sort of like, yeah, I'm done, moving on. I'm, I'm ready for this new new challenge. But you know, what does this mean for him as, as he's also sort of coming to terms with uh, you know, a partnership and, and you know, sort of exploring who he is? I think he, he really tried desperately uh, to be a good partner and to be um, and to put himself into a, into a, a similar position as Poppy's been in for so many years, um, which is in a place of support. Um, but that went away very very quickly because it's just not it's just not in his nature. And so he tried <laughs> desperately to do what he believed was the right thing, but it's always on his terms, and that's the, the main struggle that. That's the main conflict that they're always going to wind up uh, running into is that even though he's claiming to give up himself, it's always on his terms. So he's not really giving what giving her what she needs. Well, as the two of you leave Mythic Quest, that uh, sort of leaves the the wolf <laughs> <laughs> behind, or the butterfly, or whatever he is. Uh, wolf is on the card. <laughs> But David, uh, this this allows uh, you know your character to, to shine a little bit, and it does seem like he's he's kind of doing okay. He's he's thriving in a way. Yeah, I mean they boned me at the end of last season, <laughs> uh, but uh, I I think we th we thought it'd be fun to you know to catch up with our characters and see that David's actually thriving and and the fun of throwing some things at him this season, and uh, you know like we have a, a, a movie that Mythic Quest is. They're making a movie of Mythic Quest. I have that opportunity, and I want to shove it in Iron's face. So uh, we, of course, get it's sort of a one-sided territorial battle uh, where I want to prove to them how well I'm doing without them. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of like how everyone in San Francisco thinks that LA cares that they think they're better, and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> in LA, we're like, whatever. LA rules. You know? That's exactly what we talked about already. <laughs> Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, you know, he, he seems uh, Montreal seems to to be digging what he's doing. But uh, you know, it's it, this this can only last for so long. And, and uh, he's got Brad sort of uh, you know back in in the fold as well. Uh, but uh, do you do you see do you see growth in 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 David as as uh, you know as as uh, you know, he's he's out of that relationship from last season? What what kind of growth do you see in your character? Uh, you know, there's not a ton of growth. There's, <laughs> there's some challenges uh, which she steps up to, uh, and uh, and uh, but no, I you know I think the fun of it is that he you know it's fun to put him in new situations and new pairings and uh, just like all our characters, which I think we try to do as much as we can this season. And uh, you know I I you know am, uh, I find that Brad is working there as we saw, and I'm very suspicious of him and. And so I've got my eye on him. So I, uh, you know, I'm working with Joe Manganiello with the uh, with uh, the movie. So I think we have some. I got Joe as a devoted assistant, which is uh, maybe a little too devoted, a little scary. So we, we, we keep sort of playing with it. I'm dealing with Carol as well, who's who's been up um, this season to a, a more um, more involved role. So uh, I think it's it's really just more. Uh, the same character being put into these new situations and seeing how he uh, how he thrives and how he falls. Yeah, and and you see a lot of the, the different dynamics of the different characters, the pairings throughout the season. And uh, as I've had a chance to watch a few, that was a humble break. Um, <laughs> a few uh, episodes beyond the, the first couple, and and it is fun to see these these different pairings and and see the interactions between all these different characters. But uh, real quick, the the your character and Joe, of course, like you alluded to. Um, there, 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 is, there have been ups and downs in that relationship. How would you describe right now, sort of bringing back Joe as the devoted assistant, and how long will that last? Well, I've been there the whole time. You know, <laughs> I mean, Joe, do you want to answer that, Jesse? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we established that Joe's crazy and all she wants is power, and then in season two, she crashes and burns, and so now in season three, she's like, 
Um, still as driven as ever, but she's just channeling that towards the least powerful man she knows. So like she's applying that same intensity, except this time it's like to a cup of tea or to like chasing down a rodent, which um, is fun, but also troubling. Slightly less scary than like trying to kill a 14 year old. Maybe. And what I love that is if David is the least powerful person she knows, even though he's technically running the company. And, uh, she doesn't act like it. Um, but do you think she, Joe, learned anything from almost being arrested, almost going to jail last season, and, and sort of being saved at the last minute? Yes and no. We we see glimmers every now and then where she's like, "Are we ever going to have a real talk about what happened?" But she's kind of playing the part. I think she's trying definitely to make sure no one ever finds out that that's how things really played out last season. Yeah, yeah, and and she does have this interesting dynamic with with Brad as well, and I mean he saved her. Uh, but they can never really talk about it necessarily. But uh, Danny, I mean, that decision for, for, for Brad to sort of fall on his sword, uh, in, in a way, just to get street cred? Like, <laughs> is, is he showing his brother off by, by doing this? Uh, what, what, what do you make of his, uh, that decision at the end of last season, but also sort of his time in prison? He seemed to be the model prisoner, and then, and, and, you know, he, Earn something maybe, but maybe not, because eventually he seems to be right back to his old ways. Yeah, uh, so we've seen Brad as head of monetization, then we've seen him as the darkness, and then we've seen him in prison, <laughs> and I think maybe he's at his happiest now, in a weird way. Um, I was definitely surprised when I saw that, and, uh, but I did like how the show treated it, and that no one else was surprised in the cast that Brad went to jail. It just seemed like it was going to happen, and it was inevitable. Yeah. Um, I do like in this season how uh, we we see that Brad actually needs uh, this this family. He kind of needs people to get back into this company. So you start to see a little bit more vulnerability. You start to see that uh, he has been thinking about some things in prison, possibly plotting. Um, I, I expect don't, nothing less. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had a lot of time to think, which I think is uh, dangerous for Brad, but uh, it was fun not knowing exactly what he had in mind for the year and uh, kind of just seeing how he, uh, how he worked his way back into the system. Yeah, so fast, so quickly back in the system. And, and do you think he has a specific plan, or is he sort of improvising it as he sort of gets back into the fold and preys on who's the most vulnerable <laughs> to be his partner? I think that he, Brad's a real, he's a skilled manipulator. So he reminds me a little bit of a, like Little Finger, Game of Thrones. He's got that sort of like finding the power. Uh, he's really good at analyzing like a corporate structure and being like, I gotta form this allegiance, here's what this role can do. and. And here are the dangerous spots, but I don't think he really had a, a plan right away. And you start to see that a little bit in like interactions with with Jesse this year, where there is a little bit of like, is this a plot or is it something that he's just kind of on the fly trying to figure out? And that's, I mean, that was fun to play because I I truly didn't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Brad did either, but I think that was kind of fun to play this sort of game of like, how much am I revealing? How much is a plot? And uh, yeah, it was it was a fun game. To play. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, among the folks who you also, your character sort of uh, interacts with quite a bit, especially early on, is Rachel. So, you know, uh, well, first, why don't we talk a little bit, uh, Ashley and Amani, about the relationship between the two. Uh, you know, we don't get a chance to really see their, their time up north, uh, but it does seem like it went pretty well, and now they're, they're coming back down. But they both sort of run into these issues of are they really happy with sort of where things are with them? I mean, the only thing that's working is their relationship, but everything else, not so much. Um, but Ashley, why don't you first kind of describe where things stand with Rachel and uh, you know her debate over, is this really what I want? Is college really working out? And and sort of her, she, she feels a little lost, at least early in the season. Yeah, what I love that we did with Rachel this season is, um, you know, the show is a lot about the creative process uh, in different ways. And um, Rachel sort of is the example of someone in the creative process that discovers that she's bad at it. That <laughs> she's kind of uh, maybe a little too dumb for it. Um, and that is not where her skill set lies. And so she is kind of in a bit of an existential crisis when she realizes that this thing that she sort of planted her flag in and was really determined to do is actually not something that's in her wheelhouse. So, um, 
yeah, it becomes a sort of searching for her over the course of the season, and she runs into some people that take advantage of that. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, the relationship is strong. And, and so that, that's something that they both have while they're sort of discovering also individually who they are. And, and uh, Imani also, uh, sort of the, your, your character is also going through this and in, in you know, coming to Grim Pop and, and not quite sure, is this what I signed up for? First off, working for these two loons and am I the only adult <laughs> in the room? It's, there, there's, there's a lot that she's sort of having to navigate this season too. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Am I working for these two? <laughs> um, yeah, Rachel and Dana are strong. That's point blank. But uh, we pick up with Dana. She's working under both Ian and Poppy. And you think this is going to be this ideal situation. And it just turns out to be the complete opposite, where She's thinking she's going to put her new skills to work, and she's learned all these new skills at school, and now she's just the executive assistant to Poppy. Um, but, you know, the great thing about Dana is that she's really motivated, and she's going to get it done and see through no matter what. And uh, that even seen through past being the mediator of two bosses that she didn't really sign up for, she's going to you know, see it through so she can accomplish her, her goal. Will you see any more of her goat game or? Uh... <laughs> you know, Dana's on to bigger and better things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, a number of you directed this season. Uh, it seemed to be very much in the family, including a couple of you who haven't directed uh, uh, at least a, a comedy before, right, Danny? Was this your first time directing an episode? First time. Super exciting. Very Woo! Exciting. Yeah. How it go? It was really great. I, I think it was the perfect. Uh, it was really the perfect situation for me because it was our third season, so we know each other really well. I had seen already multiple people in this cast do other things. So I've seen Rob direct, I've seen David, Ashley Wright, and so people are juggling many creative hats. So it felt comforting kind of jumping in and trying something new. Um, it's just really supportive too. We change things all the time and everyone's chiming in and it's like, it's just a kind of a very collaborative, safe set to try and to learn. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely learned so much. It felt like I was in film school and, um, and just felt safe, which was really cool. Rob, how do you do? It was great. They were all Yeah. It was so, it was, it was so fantastic to see um, all, th all three flourish. Um, and that, that's something that um, I love actors, and um, I, love, I love any opportunity in which we can have people take more ownership over the entire process. Um, that's why we have so many, writer, so many actors in the writer's room and vice versa. And then we look for any opportunities to, to, to empower them to take a, a larger role in the, in the creative process. I think they all three of them did an amazing job. By the way, when you say I love actors, that's when SAG is supposed to clap. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a Ashley, kind of the same question. Uh, you know, that, that experience, and you know, obviously you've been writing uh, for the show, but also directing now. And, and what is what is that like to sort of uh, you know have to be on the other side of the camera and uh, you know direct your co-stars? Well, that was honestly a joy because we have the best ensemble. So it was mostly that was the thing that I was the most excited about was getting to play with everyone and. Uh, force them to bend to my will. Um, but really, the biggest thing for me was I already loved our crew, but I have such a, a huge appreciation for the folks that the EPs put together because they're just the best. And like an understanding of their jobs that I did not have before, I didn't really know what a dolly grip did. And then I saw our really good dolly grips do their job, and it was incredible. Um, so it, it just gave me a lot of gratitude for being on this show where the crew is so top-notch and so supportive and um, I think everyone was really trying to help us succeed, which I don't know that that would happen on every show. Um, I'm sure other shows people would be like, there are three actors directing the show, that's crazy. <laughs> but on this one everyone was like, yeah, you guys are going to kill it, like what do you need for that to happen? And so it just felt, like Danny was saying, so supportive and it was just awesome, it was such a joy. Is there some hazing though? I mean, there's gotta be some sort of ritual. Charlotte? Mm -hmm. Oh, we hazed her. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, it, I, I was trying to see how long I could get away with doing this bit where every time Ashley gave me a direction, 
I would perform it back to her by only saying the word hey. So she would be like, so you're a bit surprised. And I'd be like, so like, hey. <laughs> and it took like, what, half a day before you were like, I had other things to think about. Sure. I got Imani in on it. So she's like directing Imani, and Imani's like, so you mean like, hey. <laughs> I think that's when it clicked with it. Like, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you find, Danny? What, uh, what, any moments that uh, everyone was probably so nice to Danny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the very first thing that happened to me is uh, I met the art department. They walked over with a stack of Wayne Knight images, and I thought it was a prank. Uh, and they're like, "We need you to make a decision." And I was like, "Okay, uh, here's and you just have to pick one photo." And there's this this thing in an episode where we have an image and. But I was I was so confused because I was like, this is my decision. I have to make a picture of Wayne Knight. They're all great. They're all amazing. And they're like, just pick one. I'm like, but they're so good. And then I was like, the direction's really hard. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a prank. It was a real thing. And, uh, and I made me appreciate the art department and all the departments. It was awesome. Yeah, speak, speaking of the art department and just uh, design in general, let's talk a little bit about that Grim Pop office. That's, I mean, it's a spaceship. <laughs> um, that, that, that is an incredible set. Uh, where did that idea come from to sort of create this, this sort of uh, you know, really uh, spacey, sort of unique world? I think we were joking about how I am would want to, to make an office with no lines, with no straight lines. And then we were talking about, like, what does that even mean? How do you build an office with no lines? And then we just said to Val, um, who's the, our production designer, you figure it out. <laughs> we want it to feel like a spaceship. Um, we know that Poppy pretty much wouldn't care as long as she has access to her candy. Yeah. If we could just build some kind of really cool set that you've never seen before. And then it turned out Severance. You know? <laughs> it's that weird thing with Apple shows where I'm like doing something and it turns out they just rip me off. Like, you know, the thing. The, what's the show with the mustache? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that one. That one. And then it's, it's, you know? nope. So there's some similarities. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. Uh, the hallways, definitely. But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, it it's, uh, really must have been interesting to even just perform and, and act in, in sort of that set. It looked pretty amazing. It was pristine. And w one of the things that. Um, that we wanted to be respectful of the set and how you know you have people cleaning up after you all the time because you would leave footprints. So we would have to wear these doily, what are those like? Booty. Yeah, booty. Mm -hmm. to wear, everybody would have to wear a booty. You know those foot doilies that you see around on Amazon? Yeah, yeah. We have to wear these. I probably made a soccer team do that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, and, and then just every time you touch something or what, you were putting a smudge on it, and there was just constantly somebody who was just... And then we shot a scene where I chew up Skittles and spit them on the carpet over and over again. <laughs> you could just see people being like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's very much like my house. Yeah. <laughs> Skittles, the tree constantly cleaning up. No lights in your house? No lines. No. <laughs> uh, David was stuck there one time for three days, couldn't get out. Um, well, you know, we, we talked a little bit about sort of, you know, what do you do when you separate these characters and how do you get them to still interact? So the idea of the surprise at the end of the first episode where it turns out Grim Pop is one floor down from Rhythm Quest. <laughs> um, was, was that basically out of necessity of here's a way to kind of keep the, the characters uh, interacting in some form? Uh, uh, talk a little bit about that choice. Yeah, I mean, proximity is very important just in terms of getting the characters together. We, we also knew that just from a storytelling device that it would, it would be a fun ending, honestly. As, as simple as that, it would be fun to suggest that they're working in, you know, in, in parallel stories in different sides of the town. Of town, and it turns out they're just right on top. Yeah, and my favorite part of that is it, uh, the fact that Ian and Poppy still haven't talked to David in a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we justify that by saying there, there's another like express elevator somewhere that we haven't really <laughs> talked about. Right, it's um, I mentioned some of the pairings, but where were some of the more inspired sort of getting these different characters that normally you wouldn't see together, but putting them together and, and interacting with them? What were uh, some of your favorites from this season. Uh, brunch. 
brunch. Brunch. Brunch. Brunch. Brunch. brunch. Uh, he I wasn't there in the week. But you have your own brunch. That's true. You have more of your own. <laughs> but yeah, we see what happens when Poppy, Rachel, and Joe are idle and have nowhere to go, and we find out none of them have personal lives <laughs> to go to, and so they decide to go to brunch, where Joe really does not fit in, and then Joe takes them to where she goes to unwind, which is a car demolition deal. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty awesome. I want to believe that place really exists. It does. We went there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, <laughs> Because I don't think they've seen the episode yet, but so so it's it's a place where you can get into a tank and just like like drive over these junkers. Like That's that place right. actually exists. And we did we we, we did, did that. that. Yes. yes. Someone got a new date now. I, I, want, to to there. I want to go to there. Um, but yeah, and uh, so so without giving too much away, obviously a hallmark also every season is the the one uh, sort of standalone episode where we we. Uh, are introduced to different characters, and, and uh, it's, it's sort of the, the one sort of unique episode of the season. What can you kind of tease about this season, Stan? We can tell you about the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to kind of run it right here? <laughs> 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 None of us are in it. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, Charlotte and I are in it for a few seconds. Oh, yeah. I can't even remember. It's been a while. No, the, I think this season was very much focused on uh, on Ian and Poppy and the relationship. So I think we want to take that opportunity. The question always is, what are we going to you know break away and tell a story about if we're going to do it, and and what is going to work into the sort of current story we're telling. So it felt like a good time to take a step back and look at what made Ian and Poppy. You know, who who were they before we knew them. So that's that's what the episode's about. It's, it's us as kids. Origin story. That's exciting. It's also written by Katie McElhenney, who wrote uh, Dark Pipe Down. Yeah. Excellent. You so, like that episode. <laughs> continue with that, that, with that theme. Uh, Pop, Poppy, what do you uh, think of your origin? Firstly, the young actress that you guys cast is one of the most amazing performers that I've ever seen. She was not Australian. Her Australian accent was more convincing than mine is. <laughs> like, it was very, it was like some, I, I was, we did shoot a scene for that episode because I remember I hung out for the rest of the day because I wanted to watch this girl work. Uh, and uh, I kept seeing her in the monitors and being like, I'm here, Why, I'm not. <laughs> but like, it's like she looked more like me than I do. <laughs> well, Charlotte, by the way, I think I just called you Poppy, which I generally don't do. I'll but respond. I, <laughs> I just responded with not even like a I call me David. Well, before we go, let's kind of go down the line real quick. And, and uh, as the, the show debuts on the 11th, uh, so with the first two episodes, and it uh, continues from there, uh, maybe quick give a little uh, hint of what you're looking forward to people seeing this season uh, for maybe your character or for just the, the show in general, Rob. Uh, what, uh, what are you looking forward to uh, people discovering this season? I was really excited this year to work specifically with Imani. We have a whole storyline um, with Ian and Dana. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. It's just a dynamic that we haven't really played in the first two years. And um, I love working with every actor, but it was it was just something very special and specific and really fun. Yeah, yeah, and that goes back to loving seeing these different characters interact and, and exploring those. So, so yeah, that, that absolutely we see early in the season. So David, how about you? I, you know, I'm excited. There's a lot of things, but the Christmas episode's fun. Uh, I had a lot of involvement in that, and just it's, it's something new for us. You directed the holiday. It. <laughs> <laughs> a holiday episode. Um, it feels special in the you know in the way that, that you want a Christmas episode to have a little bit more emotion. So I'm excited for people to see that. That's great. Uh, fi finally, a Christmas episode. Uh, what what made you guys do that besides uh, stealing it from Ted Lasso? <laughs> 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 Yes, <laughs> we're we're doing we're gonna air it around Christmas time. It's like a weird, weird. No, obviously, well, it was driven by the date. We found out when we were gonna be yeah. airing, and we thought, well, if it's gonna be around Christmas, and if Lasso did it, well, and also, <laughs> well, this Lasso is the first comedy in history. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first time ever doing Christmas. Uh, but also, it's it's uh, we also found out from Moot's office. It's you know, it's the biggest day of the year, right? It's when everyone's going online there. So it's the biggest day of the year for the video game companies because they need to make sure that their servers don't crash. Yeah. And that idea that people are working 24 seven felt very specific to this world and a story to tell. So we always knew that we wanted to do a Christmas episode. We just didn't know, you know, when would be the right 
season and this this was the right one. Or the wrong one, you'll <laughs> you directed it, I'm sure it's great. Uh, Danny, how about you? Uh, I really like all the different pairings this year. I think it's an interesting um, exploration of partnerships. Um, I get to work a lot with uh, Naomi this year, who plays Carol, and that was just really fun. Elevated to season regular? We season started. regular this year. She's incredible, so funny. Um, and it was just fun just kind of figuring out new rhythms this year. That was really cool. And then Jesse and I have some really fun no eye contact scenes, which are very <laughs> odd, so that was really fun too. Uh, but yeah, it's all the different character pairings this year I think are really cool. Yeah, Jesse, does does Joe still have a, a thing for Brad? What's what's uh... okay? It's not a thing for Brad. It's, <laughs> it's a work relationship that we are making jokes about being romantic, but they're not really romantic. It's like a uh, the... no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's just this fun trio, this like romantic exes, but none of us have ever dated, and we never will. Charlotte, how about you? What are you looking forward to this season? Uh, this is a bit sentimental, but I, I, I've really felt so lucky to get to play a Filipina Australian on this show. I just feel like it's not something that I've ever seen. I've never really even seen an Asian Australian on like international television. And this season, I mean, talking about the standalone episode, we get to see Poppy's family, and they are a Filipino Australian family. And that was extremely special for me. And I just have to believe that it's going to be extremely special for some of the audience as well. That's great. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Ashley, how about you? Um, I'm excited uh, about the episode that I directed. Um, it has a very goofy storyline and a very serious storyline. <laughs> There's no middle sliders on that one. So, uh, yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited for people to see that one. All right. Any, any, anything else you want to hint at uh, in terms of... There's a rat involved? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All such great answers. So I'm excited for everything that everyone has mentioned so far, but also being able to work with Rob and Charlotte, just delving into those relationships and seeing how Dana's actually really sassy. <laughs> she got a little color and attitude on her. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And finally, Jesse. I love that Christmas episode. It's so special and fun. And we get to see um, the payoff of the brunch bonding. We see that Joe maybe took it a little more seriously than the other two guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're best friends, and they kind of forgot about it. So that's fun. <laughs> uh, well, I, and I, I, I've said this every season. This is such a special show, and uh, you know, it's it's a workplace comedy, but it's so much more than that. It's characters. It's it's got just a, a lot of heart to it, but it's also very funny and. It's, it's unlike anything else really on TV. So congratulations again on another great season. It premieres Woo! November 11th on Apple TV Plus. That's the service that you watch Ted Lasso on. <laughs> it has more great shows, including Mythic Quest. Uh, I will now ask you to please stay seated as the panelists leave. Uh, and uh, and uh, thank you all for coming so much. And thank you all to our panelists. Uh, and congratulations on season two. Woo!